We are entering into an age of communities. It's not corporations that hold the power, but communities. It's a wholesale change in how the world works. And this is going to be driven by token economics. Whether it's Elon Musk, whether it's Kathy Wood, whether it's Chamath, whether it's Mark Cuban, people are starting to understand the power of communities and the communities that they can build around themselves and their businesses. Firstly, I know the comment section is like, yeah, but Elon Musk, you know, they fill up the cars with electricity and that's burnt, built on coal power. We understand it's not a perfect world. So let's assume that 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 Tesla is relatively green compared to other car companies. That's all you need to assume. But we also know that he's been his um, profitability or his ability to run that business has been based on on subsidies, because you know that is how governments are driving green innovation is they give subsidies until these things catch their own traction and then they're able to lower the cost of production and everything works out. There is a new initiative coming from Biden, which is a new kind of carbon system. And Tesla have applied to be one of the six participants in that. President Biden has opened a major global climate summit, the first in several years, with a call to world leaders to step up to the challenge. Joe Biden pledged to cut U.S. emissions by at least half from 2005 levels by the end of this decade. But he warned his country couldn't take action alone. He told world leaders that scientists were calling this the decisive decade for tackling climate change. So it makes a nice statement if you say, well, actually, we're not going to accept Bitcoin because, um, you know, greenness. OK, that helps them set up for this new system that he wants to be part of, because obviously they are one of the least pollutant industries in America right now. So he will get a lion's share of the better credit. So that itself you, could be a cynical lens. Additionally, uh, the cynical lens is he's also been pumping Dogecoin. Yes, it's a meme. Yes, it's the crypto of the people. Yes, it's kind of stupid, but also it's starting to create network effects that a lot of people own it. So if you can now create use cases, well, then there's something interesting. Now, um, Mark Cuban was the first to see this, and he said, yeah, you could buy Dallas Mav stuff with Dogecoin because it's the coin of the people. So it was kind of done as fun, but it's exchangeable, so why not? Now, my guess is Tesla are going to accept it for payments, and they might even use it for Internet of Things streaming payments and stuff like that, because basically Elon, a bit of a megalomaniac, fancies conquering Mars, would quite like his own currency. And if he can kind of reverse into Doge and make that essentially Elon community coin, he's got free access to capital. Um, it's an astonishing thought. But that's potentially what's at play here. I could be wildly wrong, and it's all a joke. But I just you join a few dots, and you, you can get to something interesting. And I've been talking about this for a while, that I wasn't going to shake off Doge, because once you attract that many people into the ecosystem, it becomes attractive for people to do something with it. Uh, and it is in immensely powerful. And tokens drive communities, because they create the right behavioral structures. So that's what I think is happening. I'm starting to take more significant bets myself, macro bets around community tokens, uh, exchanges, um, metaverse, and some of these narratives that people on Real Vision have seen me explore. And I've started to realize how big these are and how relatively um, cheap they are as potential future large networks. Uh, and therefore, the tokens are probably underpriced to me. Look, this is the new deal. This is the new deal. It's exactly the same, and that's what it did. And what it does is shift the political landscape too. So this is the new Green Deal, and it's global. It's China, it's the US, it's Europe, it's Japan, it's everywhere. So it is massive, it's meaningful, and it's a structural shift. But also, the carbon credit system in Europe, and the one that's rolling out in the US, and the one that's in New Zealand, and the one that's in Australia, and all of these others, are also meaning that the private sector is sharing this, which is a whole new way. And it's not via direct taxes, it's via behavioral actions. If you pollute by this much, then you have to buy this many credits. Oh, look, the credits have gone up. Oh, suddenly your coal power plant? Well, that's out of commission now because you can't afford to run it. Um, very clever system. And it also means that basically you're co-opting in that massive structural change to industry too. Uh, you know, and this is what people focus on the end game. 
And I'm not focused on the end game. I'm focused on A, taking advantage of the situation that's been given to us, which is the stimulus, the devaluation of the balance sheet, um, the rise in exponential technologies driven by governments and stimulus, and also this new parallel system that's being built in the financial world, which is the crypto market, and say, let's play in that instead and stop looking for that end game. And let's just instead play the migration of game across the digital assets because it's a damn sight easier because things are going up and in your favor. You're not fighting a trend. You've got this exponential trend behind you. That's so much easier and so much easier to sleep at night than trying to fight, you know, shorting the market to say one day it's all going to go wrong.